let's learn about pendulum motion. A pendulum is a simple device that consists of a weight tied to a string, like this. Here's a, a weight, mass m. You have a string of length l. And when you deflect the weight from the vertical, it oscillates back and forth. So it exhibits periodic motion. And as long as the angle of deflection is sufficiently small, this periodic motion is approximately simple harmonic motion. So I'm going to do a, a quick derivation to show you um, how to come up with uh, the period and frequency and angular frequency for a pendulum. And unfortunately, I, I have to use a tiny bit of calculus in this derivation. There's not really any way around it. Um, so if you haven't taken calculus, just believe what I'm saying here. So here's uh, a sketch of our pendulum. There's a string, there's a mass. We've deflected it by an angle theta. So you can describe the arc length, s, from the bottom undeflected position to the location where the pendulum's at. That arc length is l times theta. So a free body diagram for this pendulum would look like this. Here's our object of interest, uh, the mass. And because it's moving in a circular path, we'll use a polar or circular coordinate system where you have a radial direction pointing toward the center of the circle, that's where the string is tied, and a tangential direction moving along tangent of that circle. So let me draw the radial direction parallel to the string and the tangential direction perpendicular to it. It's not very perpendicular, is it? Let me try that again. Radial and tangential. Okay, that's a little better. Here's our pendulum bob, the mass, and there's a gravity force which acts straight down. There's the tension force on the string that acts along the string. With a little bit of geometry, you can see that this angle here is theta. So that means we have a component of gravity in the tangential direction, actually the negative tangential direction. That gets the sine of theta, because it's opposite, w sine theta. And we have a component that's um, parallel uh, to the, sorry, a component that's parallel to the uh, radial direction. That is w cosine theta adjacent to this angle. Okay, so let's write down the Newton's second law equations for this system. Uh, the only direction that we're uh, interested in for this situation is the tangential direction. We could do the radial direction, but it's not uh, helpful for figuring out the, the period and frequency of our pendulum. So let's just go straight to the tangential direction. Some of the forces in tangential direction equals mass times tangential acceleration. And we saw from our free body diagram that we have one force in that tangential direction. It's the component of gravity uh, pointing this way. And the way we define our coordinate system is positive t is positive tangential directions this way. So our um, gravity force component is going the opposite direction, so we'll give it a negative sign. Alright, here's where I unfortunately have to use a tiny bit of calculus. Uh, so just believe me when I say what I'm about to say. Acceleration is the second derivative of uh, position 
or in this case, the arc length, which has uh, this notation. And we know that arc length is L times theta. So second derivative of arc length is L times second derivative of that angle. So I'm going to replace that stuff in this equation. I'm also going to replace w with mg. M L theta second derivative dot dot. Now these m's go away and we get minus g over L sine theta equals second derivative of theta. Now, this equation is um, kind of a complicated equation to solve. Um, in fact, you, uh, you can't really solve it, even using calculus. So we need to use an approximation. It's called the small angle approximation. This also comes from calculus, it comes from series expansions. And what it says is that as long as theta is sufficiently small, and by that I mean maybe like 15 degrees or smaller, maybe 20 degrees or smaller. So for theta less than approximately, I don't know, 15 degrees, we can say that sine theta roughly equals theta. If you want to try this out on your calculator, just type in some ink, type in sine of three degrees, and uh, you'll see that it's uh, roughly equal to the, to the angle itself. So that means in this equation, we can replace sine theta with theta. We have minus g over L theta equals theta dot dot. And now this looks like um, this looks like our uh, our Hooke's law spring equation. where we had minus kx equals ma, or minus k over mx equals a. We just have theta instead of x, and second derivative of theta for a. But a is already the, with, uh, in terms of calculus, a is already the second derivative of x. So these equations are like the same thing. We've just replaced k over m with g over l, x with theta, a with the theta acceleration. If you wanted to write alpha here, you could. That might um, make it a good parallel. Um, so what we found when we, when we did um, this analysis earlier in the, in the chapter is that you have an equation for the position as a function of time, or in this case, the angle as a function of time. It's a cosine omega t, um, plus possibly a, a phase, where omega equals square root g over l. And that means you can write a frequency, this frequency is one, uh, 1 over 2 pi times omega, and period is 1 over f, or 2 pi root L over 
g. So these are, are important equations now that describe uh, the motion of a pendulum. So I want to look at one application. This is an example, example 13.7. So let me create a little room. I'm going to erase some stuff here. application in geology. We notice that these equations for the frequency and period of a pendulum depend on g, the acceleration of gravity. Now, we've always been saying, oh, g is 9.8 meters per second squared on the surface of the Earth, but in reality, it can vary depending on the the local um, topography and composition of the, the ground below you. So if there, for example, is a, a large underground cavern, large empty space, um, there's less matter below you and the local acceleration of gravity can be smaller than 9.8. So if you have a, a careful way of measuring G, and a pendulum is exactly that, you can help find underground deposits of oil or perhaps um, natural gas or some other resources. And uh, this is one technique that, that geologists can, can do to, to see if there might be something underground. So in example 13.7, we're going to use a pendulum to measure the local value of g, and we'll use a pendulum with length 0.171 meters. And we've taken a measurement that it swings 72. times in one minute, in 60 seconds. Now using this information, we can figure out what G is. Seventy-two swings in sixty seconds. That means that the time or the period of one swing is that total time divided by the number of swings or number of oscillations, or seventy-two seconds. Oops, sorry, sixty seconds over seventy-two swings. Backwards. 60 seconds over 72 swings, which is 0.833 seconds. And now we can use our equation for the period to solve for g. Turn this around with a little algebra. Square both sides. Move things around. We have an expression now for g. Plug in the numbers and it gives you a value that's a little bit less than the usual value of g. 
9.73 instead of 9.8. So to a geologist, that would be an indication that um, underneath you, the ground is less dense than usual. Now, one other thing I want to point out about the pendulum is that its rate of oscillation, frequency period, angular frequency, doesn't depend on the mass. It's completely mass independent. So um, no matter how big this object is, it's going to oscillate back and forth at the same rate. Um, it also doesn't depend on how big that angle is. Um, if you displace it by a small angle, it takes the same amount of time to wiggle back and forth as if you displace it by a larger angle. Of course, that's only true up to some maximum angle, maybe 15 or 20 degrees, because things get weird when you go beyond the small angle approximation. But um, as long as this angle is fairly small, it takes the same amount of time to complete an oscillation, no matter what the angle is. All right, so there's some properties of the pendulum.